Dave Sutherland is the coordinator of the Association for Sustainable Forestry, otherwise known as ASF. He graduated from Dalhousie University with a degree in biology before heading to U of e for his forestry degree, way back in the 80s. From there, he was hired by the North Colchester Forest Co-op, where he worked for 16 years managing small, private woodlands for over 200 landowners. In 2000, he was hired as coordinator for the ASF, which is a province-wide civil culture initiative that provides technical and funding assistance to private woodland owners in Nova Scotia. In 2003, Dave was hired as general manager for the Nova Forest Alliance, which was Nova Scotia's only modern forest. And then he returned to the ASF in 2010, where he still works today as coordinator. He's a registered professional forester and lives in River John with his wife, Mary Beth. They have three children and four grandchildren. The title of Dave's presentation today says it all. Management and Mayhem, Lessons from Fiona. Welcome, Dave. Good morning, folks. It's great to see a nice crowd out this morning. And on such a nice day, I know you're sacrificing your time inside. So I hope that uh, the presentations uh, get their messages across and uh, that everyone has a worthwhile day. Um, it's very encouraging to hear uh, Minister Rushton uh, speak about uh, the positive things happening in forestry. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, the actions that his department has taken have resulted in uh, positive uh, work on the ground. So as Don uh, introduced me, I'm Dave Sutherland. I coordinate the Association for Sustainable Forestry and we're based out of an office in Hilden uh, in the Forest Nova Scotia building. And um, today I'd like to speak with you a little bit about our civil culture incentives as well as um, the incentives for Fiona cleanup, which I know a lot of you um, have been taking advantage of, and uh, there'll be lots more to do in the future. So this is just a, a rundown on uh, the things that the Association for Sustainable Forestry is involved in these days. Of course, we have our private land civil culture funding, which extends to small private woodlots as well as large uh, non-industrial landowners. And uh, we also are involved with uh, training uh, uh, people for uh, pre-treatment assessments on, on uh, crown land and on private land. And that includes uh, some of the natural resources and renewables folks. So we're happy to be involved in that training. Um, just recently, uh, in the last year or so, we've started uh, delivering training on a biodiversity assessment module, which a lot of people are finding handy. Uh, it's a requirement on Crown land, uh, not so on private land, but um, uh, there is a lot of interest in the biodiversity module. So I would encourage anyone here, if you're at all interested in um, uh, taking this training, it's being offered uh, 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 through the ASF uh, and instructed by Mark Pulsifer, who is a retired biologist. And I can guarantee you, you would get a lot out of that course. Um, and last but not least, uh, one of the things we're involved in most these days is uh, assisting landowners with uh, Fiona uh, cleanup. And uh, this has been a massive project. Um, we've uh, entertained something uh, in, in the likes of about 600 applications, something like that. So there is a huge demand uh, for the Fiona cleanup assistance. And um, we're um, facilitating the delivery of assistance on non-industrial private land, which includes small private woodlots, and also for industry contractors that are working on other land. Some of the uh, civil culture incentives that the ASF offers includes uh, fill planting, uh, which is uh, basically filling 
uh, sites with uh, uh, planted seedlings to bring them up to a minimum stocking level. <coughs> Full planting, which of course is planting mostly cutover areas. Early competition control, which is helping seedlings uh, get a good start. Pre-commercial thinning, which is our largest request. And uh, uh, every year we, we uh, undertake 60 to 70 percent of our program through pre-commercial thinning. Commercial thinning and selection management are two uh, more popular, uh, I guess, treatments, which uh, uh, landowners uh, see the value in doing to produce uh, solids and studwood. And it, with the selection management, it's uh, conserving and promoting uneven age stands. Uh, the other two treatments, crop tree release and crop tree pruning, um, are really for value-added uh, production of saw logs in high-quality trees, uh, and this, these two treatments are something that, uh, that uh, landowners are increasingly taking advantage of. So just a few slides on uh, the treatments themselves. Of course, everybody uh, knows what a plantation looks like. Pre-commercial thinning can range from very dense thickets to, uh, to not so dense thickets, but uh, it's an important treatment all the same to help uh, good crop trees get an early start and to uh, facilitate um, the uh, growth of the best trees in the stand. However, Fiona came along and we've been noticing quite a bit of damage to pre-commercial uh, thinnings and uh, especially in taller thinnings that have been done in the last uh, two to five years where the trees are anywhere from four to seven or eight meters tall. Uh, we've noticed a fair amount of damage in that and unfortunately that's what uh, the uh, Fiona damage looks like in a pre-commercial thinning. We had hoped that uh, pre-commercial thinnings would be spared to a great degree. And the, and the shorter ones were, the two to five meter um, PCTs uh, were largely undamaged, but some taller pre-commercial thinnings really got hit hard. Uh, one thing that um, silviculture does, of course, is create coarse woody material, which is important for biodiversity and important for wildlife habitat. So this is an example of, for instance, what a pre-commercial thinning uh, would result in as far as coarse woody material on the forest floor goes. And this is an example of what coarse woody material looks like after Fiona. And of course, there's a huge difference. And uh, some folks uh, see this as a positive thing in, in areas where uh, coarse woody material is needed, but for many landowners, um, they see it as uh, perhaps wood fiber that could be utilized. And um, so we're, we've got lots of this kind of damage along the uh, North Shore, Central Nova Scotia, Northeastern Nova Scotia. And um, uh, thankfully, the department has stepped up with a, an incentive program to assist landowners. Many people have seen this photo before, and that's an aerial shot of uh, Fiona damage, I believe, uh, in the Dalhousie Mountain area in Pictou County. So you can see uh, the extent to which some um, landscape level um, effects have been uh, have been on the landscape. And uh, it, my experience is that Fiona was fairly spotty. It did a lot of damage in some areas and sort of skipped over other areas, which was kind of similar to Hurricane Juan. But Certainly on the North Shore, uh, Fiona did a lot more, uh, or had a lot more impact on the woodlands. So just another shot of a, uh, a wind-thrown area. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this type of site. One of the things we were surprised at is how hard uh, the impact was on early successional sites, which are sites that um, um, either had been planted or um, were 
uh, in the early stages of development and in a stand like this where there's uh, you know popple and fir and spruce uh, coming up uh, Fiona even seemed to run over those kinds of stands so um, to see this early successional damage um, is uh, is something and um, it remains for a lot of these sites to be cleaned up, so people are going to have to get creative to clean up sites like this where there's almost no merchantable material. So here's an example of a commercial thinning that uh, was undertaken uh, a number of years ago um, and assisted by the ASF in the Collingwood Hills. And uh, unfortunately, many commercial thinnings, both softwood and hardwood, were impacted by Fiona, um, to the dismay of the landowners. And this is what the same site looks like when it was being cleaned up this past winter. So a tremendous difference in, uh, in, what, in the before and after um, effects. And uh, certainly uh, there's been uh, you know, some biodiversity habitat and wildlife habitat created. There's been uh, lots of brush generated, but um, a lot of trees had to be harvested, you know, before the landowners wished to harvest them. And that's if they could get them harvested. Many contractors are extremely busy these days. Some have, you know, a two-year waiting list before getting to some woodlots. So there's a real uh, challenge right now in uh, locating contractors, and uh, contractor capacity out there is, uh, is not as good as it could be. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. So here is an irregular shelter wood that was done as part of uh, the, uh, the SGM treatments, which is the new sort of matrix uh, um, type treatments which the department is promoting. And um, you can see that even irregular shelter woods uh, that are used to promote, you know, at least uh, two ages of trees and uh, trying to get uneven age stands going. Um, many irregular shelter woods were impacted by Fiona in central and eastern uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, folks uh, have uh, been challenged to uh, not only locate boundary lines on their woodlots which have been impacted by Fiona, but also uh, water courses. Um, um, I took this photo uh, on a woodlot uh, uh, which I was uh, looking at with a landowner and uh, I was amazed that there was a brook there somewhere, but uh, the Fiona uh, impact was so great that the brook was completely covered with uh, completely covered with uh, trees, and uh, uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing for aquatic habitat. However, you know, uprooted trees along the banks of a watercourse can also loose sediment into the water, and uh, that's not good uh, in successive years for. Uh, for brook trout and other aquatic uh, animals because it raises the temperature of the water. And uh, you can see in a scenario like this, if this were cleaned up uh, to a degree, um, then uh, it'll be several years before there's enough uh, vegetation to help uh, remediate the site. So at the ASF, one of the ways that we've been Sort of doing a recon on uh, uh, private woodlots is to um, fly them with aerial drones because really uh, many many areas of uh, forest are absolutely inaccessible uh, since the owner. It's a, it's a it's a nightmare to try and crawl through the down trees and uh, not only that but it's also uh, quite dangerous. There's a lot of trees that are kind of hung up and uh, ready to come down. And uh, so uh, we figured uh, the, the, the easiest and safest way to look at woodlots would be from the air using aerial drones. So we purchased a couple of these uh, fairly high-end models. They're uh, Mavic Enterprise 3, I believe, is the name of them. Is that correct, Paul? Paul is one of our pilots here. And, uh, the uh, aerial drones have worked out uh, to be very valuable tools in identifying areas of blowdown and actually um, 
you know, taking photos and then putting together shape files so that we can estimate the area that's been impacted on a person's woodlot. So um, we do have a long list of folks that uh, would like to have their, their sites uh, uh, flown with an aerial drone and aerial photos taken, or at least uh, to assess the percentage of blow down. So here is an example of uh, some footage taken with an aerial drone. And uh, this particular um, uh, photo is, uh, it depicts a corner of my woodlot, the River John. And this is uh, just one corner of it. And, you, and most of those trees that are blown down there are red oak trees. So that was the extent of uh, the, the damage caused by Fiona's. And, uh, we're a long way from getting this cleaned up, obviously, and uh, the, uh, the amount of damage is just, it's unbelievable almost, but uh, something that uh, we'll be cleaning up for years to come. So, as an example, um, this photo gives you an idea of just what aerial drones can, can do for you. Um, obviously, you can't walk through that kind of um, you know, wind throw, but uh, the drone will get you up and above it. Here's another example of a, of a site uh, containing more softwood, and um, this, uh, this is a drone image that can help you estimate the amount of uh, wind throw. And uh, you can see that there's some wind throw there, and the drones have been very valuable in helping us estimate the percentage of damage. As you can see, it's pretty good resolution. These, uh, these new drones have got excellent cameras on them, and uh, they can zoom right in. They're easy to control. You, you just program in the flight path uh, before it takes off, and basically press the start button, and away it goes. And after it flies its, uh, its route, uh, the, uh, the drone will come back and land in the exact same spot that it took off from. So it's a very valuable tool, and uh, as you can see from that photo, it gives terrific resolution. Uh, on some woodlots, uh, certainly after the leaves had fallen off the hardwood trees, it was quite difficult to um, assess the percentage of blowdown in hardwoods because hardwood trees are not as easy to see from the air uh, once they've lost their leaves. So um, the drone has been helping us with its high resolution cameras to, uh, to uh, assess this amount of damage. So the assistance incentive that we have in place right now at the ASF, uh, these are the categories of, um, uh, well, yeah, these are the categories of uh, damage that um, are being uh, ass uh, uh, assisted by uh, government funding. And for any stand before it qualifies for any kind of assistance, it needs to have at least 50% wind throw or 50% blowdown. And uh, most sites uh, that we looked at have at least that. Some are, you know, 90 to 100% damage. And what we consider a wind thrown tree is any tree that's leaning at least 15, uh, 15 degrees from the vertical. So even if a tree is Leaning a bit at more than 15 degrees, then we consider that a, a wind thrown tree and consider it uh, uh, part of the Fiona uh, incentive. So, the categories and rates that we have in place uh, for severe damage or severe wind throw greater than 75%. Uh, usually, it's uh, not hard to assess that. Um, that's funded at $475 a hectare. For the 50 to 75 uh, percent wind throw uh, category, we consider that moderate, uh, and it's funded at 250 a hectare. And then we have areas, of course, where even with the drone or from the ground, it's almost impossible to accurately assess the amount of uh, wind throw. So we have uh, what we call a blended rate in there, uh, where there's moderate damage, but it's quite variable over a larger area. And that's uh, funded at 365 a hectare. 
Uh, a fairly new uh, development uh, that, uh, that we thank the uh, Department of Natural Resources and Renewables for is a rate uh, specifically for stands containing more than 50% hardwoods. And uh, hardwoods present a challenge in not only cleanup but in marketing, especially uh, sites that have a high percentage of poplar. So um, the department has agreed to fund these areas uh, uh, at a rate of $1,000 a hectare. And um, we want to thank the uh, Nova Scotia uh, uh, forest contractors group for kind of spearheading um, the will and the demand to get this particular rate. So as far as standards go, the area that is claimed um, it must have evidence of wood products removal and so uh, any sites that are just blown down but not um, has nothing removed would not be eligible. There needs to be some evidence of wood product removal. And it should be left in a condition that's suitable for restocking either through planting or through natural regeneration uh, of at least 70%. And um, that, that's not a difficult target to achieve, 70% stocking on an area, which means that 70% of the area uh, must have some kind of regeneration or even larger trees uh, that would contribute towards that stocking. And uh, the last uh, standard there is that future silviculture operations shouldn't be hindered by, you know, either hazardous trees left on the site, hung up trees or standing dead snags, that kind of thing which might uh, influence future silviculture operations. Um, also, um, excessive material should be removed from the site and there's no real definition of excessive material because uh, in some cases lots of material, coarse woody material, is important for the biodiversity of a site. So um, this uh, business of excessive material, uh, we're taking that with a bit of a grain of salt but the bottom line is um, there shouldn't be anything left on site which is going to hinder say a future pre-commercial thinning or a planting operation or uh, anything in the next 10 years or so. So here's an example of what a cleaned up site might look like. As you can see, there's lots of brush left on the site and the merchantable material has been removed. And here's another example of what we would consider a cleaned up site. And, uh, the wood products have been removed from the site, but there's still a fair number of standing trees. And these would contribute to that 70% stocking uh, minimum th uh, that uh, we would need to uh, see in order for a site to qualify for assistance. So leaving standing trees is not a big deal as long as they're um, trees that are not going to be a hazard to future silviculture operations. We also have um, a category for boundary line cleanup and boundary line identification. And uh, basically the, um, the area or the length of boundary line that is claimed has to be adjacent to areas which are receiving Fiona cleanup. And the sites or the lines must be uh, clearly marked with some kind of flagging tape or, or something so that obviously folks can tell where that line is. And any kind of retracement or especially line establishment uh, really should be done under the guidance of a, of a Nova Scotia land surveyor who is licensed. And um, in some cases that I've seen, uh, boundary lines have to be completely resurveyed because there's absolutely no evidence of where the line was. And uh, certainly for those sites, uh, a surveyor should be contacted. So this is an example of what a boundary line might look like in some of the Fiona damage. And uh, as you can see, without the, the ribbons, you could be really hard pressed to tell where the boundary line was on this particular woodlot. 
So I should say that the, the boundary line um, identification has a rate of $500 per kilometer and the retracement or the establishment would have a, an assistance rate of $1,500 a kilometer. So a few takeaways from Fiona in our experience. Uh, the first one's kind of a, a no-brainer. You know, the effects of storms can be unpredictable, certainly on, on uh, folks' woodlots. And the second one, don't put all your silicosure eggs in one basket. We're finding more, more about this all the time, where uh, it's good to have different degrees, different types of treatments across the landscape, rather than uh, you know, having 200 acres of commercial thinnings. Uh, it'd be nice to, uh, you know, based on what growing stock is there, it'd be nice to have uh, variable treatments across the landscape. So. Putting all our silicone rigs in one basket certainly would be a bad thing in the, uh, in the face of uh, what we experienced with Fiona. We've also found that um, pre-commercial treatments like PCT um, suffered less damage in the long run than commercial treatments like commercial thinning and selection management. And that's obviously due to the size of the trees. The taller trees were just more susceptible to wind chill. And uh, pre-commercial thinnings, if they're done properly, will help strengthen the root systems of young trees and, uh, and hopefully uh, make that uh, uh, stand a little more storm-proof for the future. Uh, it's important to maintain several successional stages on your woodlot where you would have um, different ages of trees and, di and, and different stands with trees in, in uh, variable successional stages. And so you might have uh, a few acres of younger trees. Uh, next to that might be uh, older trees or trees that are later in the uh, successional stages. So it's nice to have diversity on your woodland, I guess is the bottom line. Uh, landscape level diversity and succession is important and the department has been working on this uh, since Fiona where they're looking at landscape level effects of wind throw and uh, how different treatments react to, uh, to, to storms like Fiona. Certainly we should always be considering site safety when we're cleaning up areas and uh, that includes hung up trees and uh, standing uh, snags or, or trees that might pose a threat to forest workers in the future or even while you're in there uh, cleaning a site up. So on most woodlots, it's, it, it's a real jumbled mess and um, for somebody to go in there with a chainsaw and maybe a tractor is uh, a bit of a dangerous thing and uh, we found that certainly machine uh, uh, operators are, are, are quite capable of cleaning up sites uh, using processors and forwarders. So that's the way we would, we would encourage you to go. It's a pretty dangerous thing to go in the woods with a chainsaw uh, in a Fiona impacted stand. And I know there's lots of folks that are doing it. I do it myself on occasion, but um, the, uh, the preference is to keep things as safe as possible. We still don't know what the wildfire risk is going to be in the future on, on Fiona damaged uh, woodlots and uh, the continuity of you know, uh, wood fiber that's on the ground, which uh, could certainly present some extreme fire risks in the next two or three years. So this is still being assessed. And of course, uh, Department of Natural Resources and Renewables are trying to find as many links as they can with regard to um, uh, site conditions, uh, ecosites, the types of vegetation, the types of soils on a site, and trying to pair that up with, uh, you know, susceptibility to uh, wind throw. So uh, there's also been a lot of damage to uh, folks' access roads or woods roads, and here's an example of a road that. It's completely varied by um, storm damage. 
And uh, you can see that that is quite a challenge to get cleaned up. And uh, thankfully, there is an assistance program through Forest Nova Scotia to help clean up uh, roads and make uh, woodlots accessible again. So this is the same road after it's been cleaned up. And uh, it takes a lot of work to get these roads cleared. So the person to contact, uh, if you're interested in having um, road work done, either uh, you know normal uh, woods roads work or clearing roads that have been impacted by Fiona, Todd Birch is with Forest Nova Scotia. It's the guy to uh, contact, and Todd is here today. So um, if you have time to speak with him, if you'd like to uh, talk about uh, road assistance, um, he's the guy. So at the ASF now, we've got a crew of four folks um, on our staff, who uh, half of whom are pretty well completely dedicated to the Fiona uh, cleanup uh, program. And um, all the contact information is on this slide. So if anyone wants to reach out to us, um, please do so. All right, that's the extent of our presentation. Does anyone, do we have time for questions? One quick question, maybe. 